Um, as I said, my name is Samra Suleiman. I work for Fannie Mae, and I lead the Enterprise Metadata Management and the Enterprise Logical Data Modeling team. Um, so just to make sure um, if, you know you are in the right session, and I want to make sure you know we kind of set expectations. The goal of this of today is not to um, have a technical discussion about metadata. Um, there are great sessions. I attended a couple yesterday, so there are a lot of great sessions on technical metadata. And I think for the most part, people are much more comfortable with, um, at least in our space, right, in the technology space with the technical metadata. And um, I'm also not going to talk about sort of a, have a one-on-one -on, -one on metadata in general, right? So it's, um, the intent is to talk about enterprise uh, metadata management which um, to most of us, at least when I started, was sort of an abstract and kind of esoteric topic. So um, I will focus on three major themes. One is what is the business case, right? Uh, because a lot of times, um, I, I have a technology background, and a lot of times I think folks um, go in and get all excited about the technology uh, sort of value proposition of metadata. And then you get in front of the, your SVP or your CIO and they're, they're just, you know, they're kind of, they look bored with the topic, right? And you really don't get any traction. Um, so, so that's sort of, you know, what's the business case? Um, the other talk, thing that I think is just as important is when you talk about implementation, right, where should you start? Again, I think um, most people want to start just simply because of our backgrounds, right? They want to start with the technology aspect of metadata. Um, just very easy for us to understand, right? But when you get in front of your CFO who who actually controls the money, right? And you talk about um, how great it would be to kind of link your term to the logical metadata and then from there to the physical and reporting layer, there they kind of their head starts spinning, right? Um, and even if you're lucky enough to get your program, you stand up your program, you can't sustain it, right? So implementation and in terms of where you start is very important. And then um, the last piece is um, really around um, how do you make sure you have metrics and you can measure the program, right? Um, so when I started the program, um, I met with one of our SVPs and he said, Samra, just remember, this is great, you know, everything you're talking about, great, you know, I got it. But um, if you can measure it, it didn't happen. So I don't want to hear you at the end of the year that, you know what, this is really hard to measure. And I have to tell you, that really scared me. Um, and, and it's really hard to measure, so I'll talk about that a little bit. And, um, and, and, you know, and then we can have a discussion about it because I'm sure a lot of you are running into the same thing. Um, so as I said, I work for Fannie Mae. I think most people um, are familiar with Fannie Mae. So if you, um, if you Google, you probably get more information <laughs> about Fannie Mae than I can provide. Um, uh, so I talked about myself a little bit. I, my background is um, from technology, uh, mostly in technology. I've done a lot of work in the enterprise architecture space. Um, I've managed development. I, have, uh, I, I consider myself pretty technical. Um, however, for in this role for the metadata and the modeling, um, sort of I have the enterprise hat and I'm sort of the uh, liaison between technology and business. All right, so metadata and you, right? Um, this is a slide It's not, I think everybody in this room knows what metadata is, right? And then this, the topic is not introduction to metadata. But um, this, I put together this slide because of the challenges that I was having uh, when talking to our business people. Um, it, it, they, it, I think a lot of people uh, were told in our space, um, that people were trying to simplify metadata, right? So it became so simple that the business was thinking, was thinking about metadata, uh, business glossary. Okay, terms, definition. And that initially was good because it kind of started the dialogue, but after 
a while that became a real a problem for us, right? Because we still needed funding to get to the next level of metadata, and all they could think about was, oh, well, you told me, metadata is dictionary, metadata is business glossary, I have terms, definitions, I'm done, right? And, uh, and we were sitting there like, oh, yeah, we, this is just not just the beginning, just the start, right? So I put together this slide, and, um, and the way, and also my friends and family, right? What, what do you do for a living? Oh, I, I lead a metadata program. What, what is that? Um, and most people, when I started talking about it, 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 they were like, yeah, 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 okay, I don't deal with it, I, I, it doesn't impact me, I really don't care, right? So, so, <laughs> Uh, so after a while, I said, no, actually, you, do, you, you are impacted by it, right? You, you do care because you deal with it every day. Do you have a Facebook account? Yes. And more and more people are on Twitter or, you know, Groupon or whatever, right? You pick your social media, um, uh, you know, um, medium. So I said, yeah, but remember the other day you were telling me about this, you know, customized, personalized um, content that you got, right? You got an invitation to something that, you know, you cared about or, or something that was customized to you, right? I said, that happened because of metadata, right? So, um, so even at work, I started talking about metadata in that sense because without kind of connecting the dots for people, the dots for people, I think they repeat what you say, right? Like I said, with business glossary, it became like everybody was repeating, oh, we need to have a business definition, terms and definition. And, and then any, anytime you started talking about the next steps, it was completely lost on them, right? So the idea is find a way this worked for me, for you, maybe something else, right? And um, find something that people can actually grasp, right? And then, when it, then after that, every time you give them a little more information, they can build on that, right? In the absence of that, they're just repeating what you're saying and, and really it doesn't help your cause. At least it didn't help my cause <laughs> or our cause. Um, so enough about that, right? Metadata is around us and, you know, and, and people need to know that. It's straight through processing, um, you know, your social media, personalized content, right? It's about search, discovery. It's about sharing information, right, to, uh, across the enterprise if you're sort of in the um, work environment, right, and across your, uh, you know, with your friends and family, whatever the case might, may, might be, right, semantic web, right? It's all about metadata. All right, so, so the agenda, I think I touched on that a little bit, right? Um, I'll provide a high-level overview of what enterprise metadata management is. Uh, then I'll talk about the business case, and within that I have about three use cases. And uh, you know what? This is work in progress for us, right, also. Um, I don't have all the answers. All I'm doing is kind of sharing our experience, right, what helped us, what were some of the challenges that w we had, and there were many. And, um, and then, you know, we can have a discussion. Hopefully, um, I won't. I asked Greg to keep me in check because I don't want to talk too much. So um, we'll see. And then the implementation. I think there are a couple of things in the implementation that I will touch on. One is um, you, so once you stand up your program, right, you really need to think hard about a strategy for, um, for uh, populating the content, right? Because what you don't want to do, as I said, I think loading your technical metadata is the fastest, the quickest, is what we can wrap our minds around, right? But that does not give business a quick um, ROI, right? It's, uh, the, I think the hardest thing with metadata, from my perspective, is the justification for ROI, right? And, and I'll talk about that a little bit. And then um, the maturity model and metrics, right? Uh, the, my SVP put the fear of God in me, right? <laughs> what do you mean? Don't come back to me in a year and say, you know, you couldn't measure it, right? If it didn't, if, it, if you can't measure it, if you can't show me progress, if you can't provide metrics, it didn't happen. And then some key takeaways, sort of my humble two cents about what uh, may help you. All right, uh, so an overview. So enterprise metadata management, what is it? What are the benefits and why uh, most programs fail? This is based on some of the, um, some of the um, conversations that I've had with other uh, groups and other people who are leading metadata management at the enterprise level and also um, some of our own experiences. 
All right, so what is metadata, right? What is metadata management? I'm sorry, what is metadata, enterprise metadata management, right? So uh, I really like this, this Gardner um, uh, sort of description. It's very simple, right? It's, it's about, so you can read it, the primary concern of metadata management is ensuring that data is usable across the enterprise. So okay, what, that, what does that mean, right? For me, simply it means the, it, the metadata, the, the information, the, the context or meaning that um, metadata provides context and meaning to your um, uh, uh, data, right? So we're in mortgage business, right? We, we do mortgages, right? So um, there's this the most popular <laughs> data element that we have is unpaid principal balance, right? So that's, you know, most people here probably have mortgages, right? So you, you have your principal, you have your interest, right? And then every month you make your payments and then there's that little balance that right that carries over right if you have the loan for 30 years you have it for 30 years or whatever right uh, yeah yeah that's right that's right <laughs> um, so um, so that's that's sort of what we call a critical data element in our environment right so um, without and depending on where you stand where you are and how you're using that UPB, right? If, a, if you bring in a loan, we're a mortgage company, right? If you bring in a loan, right? That piece of data has a different state, right? It's you acquire a loan, right? So that, what the people who are processing that information, right? That piece of UPB during their acquisition, they have a very different view of that data versus when you go to foreclosure, right? You, you miss three payments, you're, you know, the bank is calling. The people who are dealing with that, they have a very different understanding of what UPB is and how it should be dealt with versus people who are just getting a loan, right? So sort of different states of, a, of, a, you know, of an entity, right? So, um, so the idea is, without the metadata, right, you, do, you, you can't uniquely identify the, that information, right? And then you have all these business units across the organization, right? And everybody, if, if you don't have metadata at the enterprise level, everybody has a slightly different understanding. Like I said, right, the people who are dealing with acquisition, they, they think of it differently, they describe it differently, they, um, we, we have gone over and over the definitions with them, right, from people who are sitting at the, um, you know, loss mitigation or sort of at the end of the loan, right? So without having a common vocabulary, sort of a common semantic, it's, it's almost impossible to, um, to communicate, um, communicate that, right? So I have a use case, I'll talk about that, right? So um, what is data, so what are the benefits of um, enterprise metadata management, right? Um, what kind of data is available at the, at the sh what, what we call shared data, right? So what are the pieces of data that are, infer that are available across the enterprise, right? You don't wanna put everything in your enterprise repositories in general, right? Um, so in Fannie Mae, we have um, a couple of different concepts around that. Um, so I'll talk about that um, later. One is sort of the business of uh, critical uh, data, data that goes across the entire information uh, supply chain, right? From the beginning all the way to the end, right? And, and if you wanna do straight to processing, right? If you wanna do um, lights out or whatever, right? You have to have that information available and everybody speak the same language, right? You may have a little accents here and there like me, but you all have to <laughs> have the same um, vocabulary, right? Otherwise, it just, it's not gonna work. Um, and how the data is linked, right? So that has a uh, modeling aspect, right? You, you have your business constructs, right? And how, you know, and your relationships, so. And then um, how data is classified, right? As data, uh, non-public information, right? You need to know that. And, you, and that information needs to be available at the enterprise level, right? Your enterprise <laughs> risk folks will tell you, um, you know, they'll come after you, right? If you have a slightly different understanding of what that NPI is, right? And you kind of do your own thing and they, they say, what do you mean? So everybody needs to have the same understanding. A metadata repository is a great place for that, right? Um, who governs the data? I'll touch on that a little bit, right? You, there are a few concepts that um, you really need to, you cannot have enterprise metadata management at, at 
at the, you can't have metadata management at the enterprise level without uh, the sort of the governance side, right? So I'll touch on that. Um, and then the root cause analysis and impact analysis, right? So root cause analysis and sort of the geek talk, right? We call it uh, data lineage, right? And then, um, but you go in front of your CFO, you talk about lineage, their head will spin. Um, and, you know, or impact analysis or what if scenarios for us, right, is sort of taking a, a piece of information, going through all the layers of architecture, right, and kind of um, trace that, right, see what the impact of a change, potential changes across all the layers of um, inf uh, the infrastructure or architecture. Um, so effective enterprise metadata management is, is truly enable and is, um, is an enabler for increased business productivity, right? But you need to get there, right? Because initially it is so kind of hard and abstract. Um, once you get there, I think people will see it and the ROI will be there, but so how do you get there? Um, why most programs fail? Um, so I, the first bullet is something that I really believe in, right? When you go, so you, you, you may be able to, um, talk about metadata, right, sort of the technical metadata to your technology leadership to a point, right, to a point. Even the CIO, right, he, 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 he may get all the concepts, right, but he, he has restrictions because he's getting his money from the higher people, right, the uh, finance, financial people, right. So if, if, if he cannot go in and, and say, you know what, and at that level, they're not talking about how do you do data lineage, right? So at that level, they're talking about, okay, so this is what I get, this is, these are my expenses and my costs, right? Does it affect my bottom line, right? And unfortunately, it's very difficult to tie metadata to, um, to directly um, to your bottom line, right? To your financial statement. Um, and and it, I think it would have been a, a, lot, a little easier if you could get people to openly talk about how much time they're spending on their individual spreadsheets and access databases and all these different um, uh, sort of um, ways that they're pulling information together, pulling metadata together, right? But you can't. I, I can speak from experience. I cannot get a single person to tell me. I know there are five people in our acquisition space that are working on metadata all day long, right? I, either it's technical metadata, or, but I cannot get anybody to admit and give me dollar value, right? So because of that, I don't have a baseline, right? So how, you know, so that's why it's so difficult. Um, and you really have to have um, sort of a C-level sponsorship, right? Either your CIO, your, your um, CFO, and so we are very uh, fortunate in that, um, unfortunately, after 2008, right, the sort of a, the, um, um, after the financial meltdown, right, there was a lot of uh, incentive for um, financial industry in general, right, um, to, to sort of provide some transparency in the data movement, provide transparency in the um, sort of identifying the, the financial instruments, right, that have a long life cycle, right, and they go through different entities, right, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so they, um, they, um, the impetus was there, right? So we have, um, from our regulator down to our CIO to CEO, um, um, support for entire enterprise data management program and we have an initiative and metadata is part of that. So in that sense, we're very lucky. That said, as I told you, right, my SVP said, if you can measure it, it didn't happen, right? So you, we, you still have to go back and justify. So I, I think that's, uh, this, I wanna highlight the fact that despite our regulators and despite our CEO support, right, we still have to go back and constantly justify the, um, it, you know, and be able to sustain the program, right? Because I, I think the one thing that um, happens quite a bit, people can justify um, sort of standing up the program, putting a metadata repository, right? And then, because you start with the technology, and I don't wanna kind of um, harp on that too much, right? I'm a technologist, so I know why we do that, because that's, it's really, you know, it's a huge uh, productivity gain fr from that, but it doesn't resonate with your business people, right? So we, we just have to think differently about that. And um, 
And another thing, and, and this again, we are very fortunate that the, our metadata program is, is not considered a project, right? This space is too complex, right? Uh, too many layers, too many different um, sort of different disciplines within the metadata, right? You have technical metadata, operational metadata, business metadata, right? Then you have unstructured metadata, right? It's too, it's too complex to kind of say, okay, it's a project, check, I'm done, right? And that's why I think it's one of the major reasons these programs fail. Um, and then I, I talked about this before, right? There are a, an ability to baseline and kind of show progress over time, right? So one of the things that I always tell my team is, you, you gotta think big, right? You have to think big, you have to think, um, you have to know where you wanna go, right? You, you have to, you know, if you have these big aspirations, okay, I wanna, I, I wanna be able to do straight through processing in three years, right? Across all my business, um, take a transaction, all my business transactions will be straight through processing, lights out, that's a great, goal to have, but you have to be very practical, right? You have to be able to kind of deliver value quickly, but also show what you're, how you, what you're delivering, it makes, it, it kind of puts you one step closer to the ultimate goal of whatever it is, straight through processing or whatever the case may be. Um, so I, the one takeaway from this one is you have to make sure they, um, you deliver ba business value, otherwise adoption will not happen. And, and we have had a couple of metadata programs in the past that uh, sort of uh, unfortunately didn't go very well. <laughs> Um, and um, and it, it was because of that, right? We were either think we were either very uh, tactical and kind of thinking technology, or we sort of um, didn't have a good roadmap on how to build the program and then kind of show progress along the way. All right. Um, so the business case. So I said uh, at the beginning, right? I'm going to talk about three themes: the business case, the implementation, the maturity and model, and how to um, metrics and kind of how to provide uh, metrics around the program and show progress. All right. So um, I think if you think about, if you work with your business folks, right, I, I think there are a number of different business um, use cases that you can come up with. These are the three that um, I decided to put on here. So, and I, and I try to um, have sort of a three different audiences in mind when I put this slide together, right? So the first one is regulatory compliance, and I, get in, I will get into uh, a little more detail um, in the next couple of slides. Um, so th those are your enterprise risk people, right? Or your operational risk people, right? Um, then straight through processing. Uh, that, this is one area that I have to tell you, it resonates with our technology leadership, right? Our CIO, our, um, we have business information officers. They get that, right? They, their whole life is spent on trying to figure out how to get the systems to produce faster, quality data, right? These are all the things that they, they that resonates with them, right? Um, and then when I talk about metadata in terms of straight through processing, how am I doing with time? Okay, half it done, ooh, okay, I gotta speed it up. Um, all right, um, so I'll talk about that. And then uh, the, the third audience is your, uh, the um, financial modelers, right? We have a lot of financial modelers, right? Uh, it's about the analytics, right? Uh, business analytics, and I won't get too much into that, but obviously if, if you wanna do modeling, uh, I'm sorry, if you um, do analytics, metadata is key, and I'll, I'll touch on that as well. So again, metadata is, is sort of provides the necessary meaning and t context to your data, and, um, and kind of we, we say, you know, it turns your um, data into information, right? Without that, it's just another piece of data. You don't have context. You don't know how um, it fits in in the larger picture. All right, um, regulatory compliance. So um, I'll, I'll just use a couple of examples, um, and I think uh, they pro probably resonate from most, uh, from resonates with most people. Um, so one is, um, the sort of business vocabulary, right? So after 2008, I think this became sort of a, um, a big deal in the financial industry, right? The ability to trace an as asset, right? A financial asset in our case, right? Through uh, the entire transaction life cycle, right? And be able to identify each um, 
uh, instrument, each um, financial asset, right, uniquely across the life cycle, across um, multiple entities, right? Um, so where do you do that, right? So metadata has a huge part of that, right? Because all of that is metadata. So I think that's, that has been a huge impetus or around um, the, some of the efforts in the industry around semantic repository, which um, EDM Council, I'm a member of Enterprise Data Management Council, um, so they're tr sort of trying to kind of move that forward, and a number of other organizations, right, trying to move that forward. Um, the second one is um, root cause analysis, really it's about data lineage, right? And um, this, this is a true story. Before we started this program, um, my boss came to me and said, I need like two, three people to go and do a lineage because uh, this one part of the business um, has a SOX finding. And the finding was that they had about 112 data elements um, that were appearing on the financial um, statements and it, on the 10Q and 10K, and um, the, uh, the auditors were very uncomfortable about what that was. So they wanted to trace that information back, see where the data came from, what were some of the transformations around the data, right? And why, you know, so how do we trace that, right? We did not have anywhere in the company this information readily available. And to further complicate it, um, this was sort of at the end of, and I have a lineage, um, picture, I'll talk about that more. But anyway, so this was going through about three or four different systems uh, along the sort of the information chain, right? From the minute we got the information to the minute that appeared on the report that caught the regulators' um, um, attention. And we really, it, we were relying on internal SME network, subject matter experts, right? Network and our friends and you know, whoever. So that body of work, we traced 112 data elements. It took a month and in terms, and this is a true story. And they, my team had to touch 1,100 data elements. They had to analyze that, right? They had to go through transformation. They had to go through ETL code, right? And then they had to kind of figure out no documentation. So you call your friend and the call, friends calls you. the other friend and it's just a mess, right? Took a month. We got it done, right? Um, it was, so that became our lineage spreadsheet. But um, then you have to maintain it over time, right? That resonates. So now every chance I get, I talk about this. <laughs> And it, it resonates internally with our people, right? So I think everybody in this room can probably come up with two or three these sort of major issues that you have, right? Um, that you can say as a, hey, this is a use case. This is what you can do. Um, this is how you fix this, right? We also have disclosures, same thing, right? If it, the disclosures go to investors and if the information is incorrect, that has happened a couple of times, it's hit the news, right? So I kind of, it goes immediately on my little list and I talk about it and talk about it. So it kind of gets annoying, but um, it, it <laughs> crosses the point, gets, makes the point. Um, all right, so um, this is, as, as I said earlier, this, this um, slide really resonates with our technology um, leadership. It's really about um, automating the data handoff points, right? You have all these interfaces, you, bring, you get data, into um, you know your system, and then you spit it out, you know, for a report or whatever. So that's you know you need to be able to have you speak the same vocabulary, right? <coughs> Excuse me, and you need to make sure you have um, you know the same data standards, data types, the precision, whatever the case may be, right? And then impact analysis is um, your ability to provide traceability by linking. Uh, different layers of architecture, and we've done some work with that with our um, with our um, vendor partner, um, which uh, has been really good. So I'll touch on that a little bit as well. Um, business analytics. Um, I think there are so many great sessions. So you know, in in this conference about that. Um, just you know, the point here is again, you can do. Um, analytics without uh, metadata, right? And more and more people are um, trying to do virtual marts, right? You, your ability to kind of, you know, provide data very quickly to, you know, to a dedicated set of um, business users, right? Virtual marts, you can't do that without metadata, right? 
right? So it's, again, metadata re really, right? It's about your ability to search, discover information. The faster, the, uh, the better quality data and metadata you have, you, you know, you, uh, you're more successful. All right, um, I think, am I doing on time? <laughs> 18 minutes, okay. Um, all right, um, implementation. Um, I think in, the, in, in terms of implementation, you, you really need to know your, the culture of your organization. You need to know how much support you have uh, from, you know, from your leadership, right? Your immediate leadership, right? Are they completely um, in sync with you, right? And also at the enterprise level, right? Um, your, your, again, your C level, right? How much um, willingness there is to, um, to provide funding and to support the program, right? And be able to sustain it. Um, so, um, so there are a lot of words on this slide, so I'm not gonna go over everything. Uh, the idea is, as I said, you really need to think big, right? Because, um, so in our case, um, our, the mortgage industry is it's in the middle of a huge transformation, right? Not just because in Fannie and Freddie and you know, the GECs are impacted by that, but it's larger than that, right? It's about housing market, it's about how, how we do um, sort of um, deal with mortgages and housing in general in the future, right? So we're just you know, part of that, but it's a much larger conversation, right? And so, so you need to think about how you're gonna look like, in our case, right, in three years from now, in five years from now, right? So we need to think very big, right? We need to think about, um, you, you wanna get out of these silo modes, right? You wanna be, you know, where, you know, all these transactions are done very fast, very quickly, right? So you can process volume, whatever the case might be, right? So, um, so you have to think big, but as I said, you, you can't think so big and you, you can't try to boil the ocean, right? And kind of go and say, okay, I'm gonna do all of this and it's gonna be perfect and I, I need the program to be perfect. You cannot, this will never be perfect. And if you, if you shoot for perfection, you're, you're paralyzed, right? Because there's always somebody somewhere along the way who'll tell you you're wrong and you know, so, and you know, technology, part of technology is there, part of it isn't there. So think big, but be able to, uh, to execute incrementally, right, in a smaller, um, in a way that, uh, as, as I said, right, have a roadmap that the, every step on that roadmap that you deliver needs to map to your bigger vision, right? And um, so for us, that the big vision is eventually everything should be straight through processing, right? We want to get out, we want to be um, a data-driven organization, right? So everything we do is sort of kind of tracks along that spectrum. Um, so in terms of implementation, there are um, four types of metadata that, you know, sort of the way we're thinking about it, right? Business metadata, that to us is the semantic um, vocabulary, right? The, your business vocabulary, your semantics, um, your technical metadata, right? And then within that technical metadata, you have the design time metadata, right? Sort of your physical models, your schemas, your, um, um, you know, sort of those artifacts, right? And then um, runtime metadata. One of the things that we have stated for now for the program is we're not getting in the uh, runtime metadata, right? So the way my simple brain, I talk about uh, runtime metadata is in the dynamic information that you need to run a program, to run an application, for instance, your configuration <laughs> file, right? Something that's sort of, um, while, while an application is running, um, you need to go um, dynamically and pull some information, right? So what we said was we think big, that's definitely part of our strategy, right? It's part of our vision, it's part of the strategy, but you know what? For 2012, don't even talk to me about runtime metadata because I'm trying to figure out how I do the rest of it, right? Um, so I think being a little practical about it probably helps in kind of setting expectations ahead of time, right? Because uh, I have the uh, senior technology leadership who are telling us, you know what? Oh, this it would be so, so cool if we can do that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? You told me I have to show progress and, you know, and until then I can't do it in 2012. And, and it's surprisingly, they, they get that, you know, because that's how they think, right? It's, um, 
They don't want you to be all over the place. And if you can show that, you know what, here's where I want to go, this is where I am, and just help me, you know, get there and don't, don't kind of uh, refocus me every, you know, two months because then I won't deliver anything. Um, uh, the, the one question that I, I, I get all the time, not anymore, but at the beginning was, oh my God, we have five you know, different metadata repositories. Now you're gonna stand up a sixth one or seventh one, an eighth one, what is this? I, we don't need another metadata repository. Yes, you do, right? You do need an enterprise metadata repository that becomes your trusted source, right? Both for governance, for a um, for, for number of reasons, but even, you know, you can't have a governance program without that, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's our governance person. <laughs> it's Greg Wright. <laughs> um, all right, again, the takeaway here is think big, but know how you want to get there and have answers along the way. And, and, and and be a little um, assertive when they tell you, no, 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 don't focus on this, right? Once they bought into your roadmap, you, you gotta stick with it, right? And you gotta remind them, hey, you gotta stick with it. All right, 12 minutes. All right, so the, the use cases, so I'll, I'll kind of go over that quickly. Um, so what we did is, as I said, right, there are different types of metadata, and I didn't even talk about operational <coughs> metadata and, and structure in the previous, um, right? Oops, told you I'm bad with this, um, right? So I didn't even talk about these two, and what I have said to the technology, to our leadership is, don't even talk to me about unstructured, about operational and runtime metadata, right, in 2012. We need to get the sort of a static view of metadata, sort of design time metadata, um, both from the technical and operational, uh, technical and business, and then we'll, we will build on that. And, and they get that, you, but you just have to remind them of that a few times. Um, so, so within that, that little world that I've created now, right? So we said it's gonna be design time metadata, it's gonna have a business aspect, um, aspect and it's gonna have a technical aspect, right? So what does that mean, right? So there are three use cases here. One, your business glossary, so I'll kind of uh, talk about that a little bit, right? Two, your ability to do impact analysis, um, it, what, you know, and I'll talk about what that means, right? The ability to trace a piece of information through all the layers of architecture and be able to articulate, uh, do uh, what if scenarios, right? And also articulate, okay, if, if there is a potential change at this level, right? How many databases, how many servers, how many whatever will get impacted? And then um, our uh, beloved root cause analysis <laughs> lineage, right? Everybody, um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always told, oh, I want a uh, data lineage. And you know, it's, it's not easy to get data lineage, especially if you have a lot of legacy, right? That's another, th uh, point that I think you have to have a really clear um, vision and um, know where you want to go in terms of the, the amount of time you want to spend on your legacy system versus the new, right? And, and, and that, I think, is something that's very different for each organization, right? If you're in a sort of transformational um, state, you may not want to spend too much time on your legacy, right? If, if your business model is changing or whatever. But that, I think, is very individual and you know, depends on your organization. So uh, three use cases, right? Your business, uh, business vocabulary or glossary, your um, basically your impact analysis, ability to trace the data and do what if scenarios, and then root cause analysis, right? Ability to um, trace a piece of information from the point of entry into your organization, in our case, and point of entry into Fannie Mae, all the way through all the, for instance, a disclosure report that goes to the investors, right? And if there is an issue, how do you trace it back, right? How do you walk it back? and kind of understand what are some of the transformations, what, how, how many data derivations were done, right? And things like that. All right, so the goal is, right, the way I communicate it to our business uh, fo uh, folks is consistent, linked, and traceable data across the enterprise for your core information, right? With, for your core business information. So I'll talk about that a little bit next. Um, so business glossary. Um, so business glossary, uh, 
the, this is what initially when we started, people talked about this and it, it became um, something that business understood and resonated with them, but unfortunately it became that was the only thing that they were focusing on, right? So that presented a little bit of an issue for us. Um, at the high level, what we have done for business glossary, we've kind of divided um, the our, um, our data landscape in a couple of different ways. One is the enterprise view of data, and that's um, any piece of information that crosses the transaction, business transaction, sort of the information um, life cycle, right? It, it goes end to end and uh, conf uh, completes a business transaction, right? So um, that is what we call sort of core data or critical data. That, that's critical data for our business, right? And we have a couple of other classification and categories. I want to make sure Greg doesn't kind of get mad at me. Um, and then after that, uh, it's um, the, we bring in the individual business unit's view of the world, right? That view is still very real, right? So that's something, especially if you have legacy, you really have to um, sort of deal with that too, right? Because you can't tell everybody, okay, from now on, you know, we're only, speaking about these 200 terms and the rest is, you know, we're not interested. You need to have some level of governance, right? Sort of a more of a federated model. Um, what's included in the business glossary normally, right, is your the business terms, your definitions, um, your trustees, right, the accountability, who's accountable for the data. That's a governance concept, so I don't want to get into it too much. Yes, yes. Uh, so we have data stewards, we have, we call them business data leads, we have uh, business trustees, these are people who truly are on the business side and they own the data and we have business custodians who are the sort of the operation uh, folks. Um, I'm kind of going through that a little fast because Greg is telling me I need to speed it up. Um, all right, impact analysis. So um, impact analysis really is about how do you trace your data through different layers of architecture, right? Um, it, it's sort of a kind of technical term and with that, that's when initially when we were talking to our business people, we were getting so excited to say, hey, imagine if you can do that. And they, they just kind of looked and say, really? And so, so, so that was not good. <laughs> um, so basically, it's um, you know at the highest level is your business glossary your semantics, right? And and you have to make a decision whether that what that is, right? It could be your enterprise logical, right? Or you you can decide that you're going to have a different business uh, vocabulary. So I'm I'm not here to recommend um, one way or the other. I think these things are entirely dependent upon your um, the culture of your organization, how you're um, you're thinking about data, what you know how much influence you really have and how political your organizations are, right? But the idea here is you have a semantic layer and then um, you usually have a canonical, you know, sort of a model layer. Um, we call, you know, our enterprise logical data model and then um, you may or may not have an application logical and then a physical and then your database and your business intelligence, right? So the idea here is how can I trace this information, right? Link it and then trace it. And then if somebody comes, so our regulators, right, um, come to us and kind of tells us what to do sometimes, right? And um, so, for instance, they come and say, you know what, we're going to launch a new program, and as part of this program, you need to have these five new terms, and these are the allowable values and all that, right? So it's not just as easy as going into the, you know, our metadata repository and adding it, right? We need to know how, who, what applications need to leverage that, use it, right? And what's the impact, right? So you can kind of go through that if everything is linked properly, right? You can say, okay, 25 databases were impacted, three applications, you know what, give me three years and two million dollars. No, I'm kidding. All right, root cause analysis. Um, again, initially when we were talking about the root cause analysis, we had these pictures of models that, you know, an attribute was linking to another attribute and, if, you know, to a column or whatever, and people's head were spinning. So, so the idea here is, right, there's this normal on flow of information, right, which comes from a, either a trusted source or a system of record, right? It goes through system one, it goes to system two, it goes to system three, right? And along the way, there are transformation of that data, right? They, you add to it, you kind of, you know, 
multiply it by 100 or by 100, whatever you, could, you know you do to the data, right? And then it re ends up in a report, right? Um, we have, obviously, we have investors, so we do a lot of disclosure. So, you know, it's very important that the data that you provide on a disclosure is correct, right? And if you have an issue, how do you walk it back, right? How do you know where the issue occurred? We also are outsourcing a lot of our technology pieces. And um, so the SME network is no longer there, right? It's not like you can call your friend and say, hey, you know what? I, I, tell me what's going on with this UPV, right? So something to consider. But um, I just kind of put this picture because it's all this modeling stuff, <laughs> people were giving me weird looks. So um, this, this tend to um, work for them. So oops. So this is the normal flow of the data, and then you kind of walk it back from system A to B, and uh, all these things are hops along the way, right? And um, kind of document it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my god, I have three minutes. Um, all right, so I'm not going to go over this. Um, basically, the, um, the idea is uh, your metadata management, enterprise metadata management should be part of your governance program, right? It should be, um, in our case, the way we're structured, we have enterprise data management as a sort of an umbrella group. Within that, we have four disciplines. We have enterprise metadata, enterprise data quality, enterprise data governance, and enterprise logical data modeling. Um, so um, I always joke that my um, governance um, uh, colleagues are my biggest customer because it's, it's really about governance, right? It's how do you track your trustees, to, you, to your point earlier. Right? Um, how, how you define the terms, definition, allowable values. How, how do you provide consistency and data standards across the enterprise? Um, the, the, I was going to get into this, but I'm running out of time because I want to allow time for uh, questions. So um, enterprise data quality and architecture are also um, a good use cases. We're working with Mega right now. We're doing um, we're proof of concept with Mega, which is an enterprise architecture tool, and sort of kind of uh, trying to do impact analysis um, across the enterprise assets, right? Um, and then kind of do part of it in, um, in Adaptive, which is our metadata repository tool. Um, so just a number of different use cases that you can come up with here. Um, I'm going to touch on this a little bit. So, so at the end of the day, you need to be able to, um, to baseline your program. As I said, it, it was incredibly difficult to baseline the program. So uh, what we did was, um, I, I, I think I mentioned I work with the Enterprise Data uh, Management Council a lot, and they have come up with a, a maturity model for the enterprise um, uh, enterprise data management in general. So, but you, you can use whatever is your, you know. Uh, your way of measuring the program, right? The idea is you need to show progress over some spectrum, right? And you need to show where you are. So this is not where we are, but <laughs> so I just kind of exaggerated this because um, legal and communication told me I can't talk about our program. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so you know, let's say you, you know. There are five levels, right? And then um, there, I put some ex expected behaviors for each level of maturity, right? So incomplete is you don't, you know, everybody's doing whatever they want to do. It's ad hoc, spreadsheets all over the place, right? Even performed, right? People are very reactive. They, they, they know, they build a database and then they go, oh, wow, we, we need to have some sort of a. <laughs> Greg, you're killing me, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, so to end of the spectrum, right, you need to, as I said, you need to think big, you need to know what your goal is, but um, you also need to show, and, and I actually have a um, dashboard that uh, tells my management, right, uh, you know, there are a number of areas that, that in terms of, so I have something called awareness, metadata population, content population, increased capabilities. Those are on my dashboard. So I kind of come back and say, all right, so we're here, we're here, and then this year we're going here, and next year we're going to go here. All right, Greg, 
I finish this. So key takeaways, sea uh, level sponsorship, all these things. But the, at the end of the day, keep it simple. You cannot overthink this. You cannot make it complex. I think technology people tend to kind of go in meetings and try to wow people. Don't, don't, don't do that because it will backfire, right? Uh, it, if you deliver the program, that's the wow factor. Don't go and kind of dazzle them with all these graphics around how these models are coming together. They're, they just, they don't care. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.